Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Micah Let's Play, and guess who I am? I'm Micah, because who else would I be? Okay guys, as you all know, there has been an amazing showcase uh, for Hogwarts Legacy that dropped the other day, and today I am gonna take a little bit of a deep dive, we're gonna look at everything, we're gonna talk about everything, but I'm gonna do this in three parts. So first we're gonna talk about the grounds outside of Hogwarts. The second video will be solely committed to the combat system, and the last and final video will be the Room of Requirement, uh, which is actually my favorite part of the entire showcase. So I did a live reaction, the link will be in the video description, um, and to everyone who was watching, thank you so much for leaving your comments, your likes, I really appreciate you because you guys do not know how much that actually helps. Uh, a YouTuber in general. So again, thank you guys so, so much. And if you are enjoying this content, you know what to do. <laughs> so guys, we're going to go ahead and dive into this. Um, and we're just going to look at everything. We're going to talk about everything. Oh my glob, because this game is freaking beautiful. But despite all the beauty we saw, there were a lot of things we should have been paying attention to. Because uh, in my reaction, I was looking at everything. So some parts I was really quiet because I was really trying to focus on what I was looking at. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can clearly see, we're right back where we left off. We're at Hogwarts. Oh my god. So cool. So good. Uh, I'm gonna mute some of this. Some of the parts I will um, play so we can hear it, but most of it, it's gonna be muted. Okay. So as you can see, we're right outside of the astronomical clock tower, um, and our character has this amazing amazing jacket like oh my god this jacket is freaking gorgeous Ugh. and then you can see here with the spell diamond we have leviosa we have accio it looks like this is speliomus and maybe incendio you know because it's a flame spell we know illuminati confirmed and everything our ancient magic meter and we'll talk more about the spell diamond uh in the combat so let's get started like i already said so from here, um, you see we get to walk in, as you can tell, it's, this is from the ASMR, the Autumn ASMR, so I like how they kept theme of that. And then this part right here, you actually hear uh, his footsteps while he's walking, and then he jumps on the broom and he's off. And what I want all of us to notice is right when we start flying down, um, there are a few things that are happening on the map, on the Wii map, which you notice the little gold icon right here. I believe that means we actually have a quest that we need to go to or an active quest. Like that's a location we need to find ourselves in. And again, just look at this game. It is so fucking beautiful. Oh my God. To the entire team of Avalanche, if you randomly see this content, oh my God, so good. But let's continue. So as we're flying down, you guys will notice that this is, well, he's not there yet, but this is Hagrid's hut. So this is Hagrid's hut. I love the way it looks. It's so, it. when I saw it, I got like such a huge ping of nostalgia, you know, waiting to see Hagrid and see, um... Thing, his bloodhound like somewhere on the grounds you know and it just makes me think about all the times I read Harry Potter so for me I like that a lot and if you'll notice right here on the map the little page with the question mark that is a Revelio um, area so somewhere in this general uh, vicinity in the groundskeeper's house uh, is a Revelio page so that's something to keep our mind on so these are the things I was missing when I was initially looking at it and you'll see here that when you press left on the d-pad I mean yeah right sorry right on the d-pad um it goes to the wand so again maybe that's how you do your boost or something I'm not quite sure how you actually get on your on your broom but and I said wand sorry but I don't know how you actually get on your broom but I'm pretty sure that left d-pad might be to mount or dismount not entirely sure um but yeah i was excited i see that but there's more guys there's so much more so let's continue and allowing our little man and that jacket that jacket though that jacket is the goat okay so as we pass it you'll notice there's a little something here this might be like a cave like a cave you go off to but what that cave is i really don't know 
And also, mad, mad, mad props to Wife Wants a Wizard. As you can see here on screen, um, he actually followed the direction the character was going in and he recreated the map. Dude, you are a freaking genius. That is so, uh, so smart. That is so, so incredibly awesome of you to make this map and to share it with the community. Um, be sure his, his channel link will also be in the video description if you don't know who he is. If you see my content, I'm quite sure you see his. But on the random chance you don't know, his link will be in the video description. Um, he does like amazing work. It is so good. He's so detailed and he's so amazing with math and geometry. Like, mad respect to him. So thank you again, Wife Wants a Wizard, for creating this map. Okay, and then also this area over here, we need to pay attention to it because we'll be coming back to it again after we go all the way around. Um, the Andrew will be coming back this from this direction and we're gonna see something important there. But we're gonna also notice some other things as well. So this looks like, I'm so sorry, it looks like this is a chest, but there are a few other icons on the screen that we'll point out. So as um, we see the incredible animation of the character moving around, here's what I want you to notice. You see a flu flame, you see this icon right here? Uh, like again, I think it's a magnifying glass. I really can't tell. Uh, but you also see another quest marker. So that means there's someone over here who needs our help. Then of course, um, also in this area, there are, looks like treasure boxes. So treasure chest are in this area. So that means we get to go around. If we were on foot, that means we get to go around and explore. And you'll also notice like a little ring or something right here something that's kind of like glowing or maybe that's from the tree but it looks like there's like a like when you run into an npc and they have that little golden thing around them i think that's what that is but i could be wrong uh and again i love the homes they look so good and i know everything has like a slight blur to it because he's flying uh but yeah really really good stuff okay right here you see the little go uh, golden circle? There's nothing there, but there's this little box there. So that means that's something you need to investigate and look at. So that's what I think that is. And it's really cool. And I love all the water that we see here. And I love the greenery. I love the trees. Ah, oh, so whimsical, so magical. And it's funny because Mackenzie said that magic in the Harry Potter world, in the wizarding world, it's physical, it's, uh, it's whimsical. She used another word, which I can't think of right now. The magic in the wizarding world is everywhere. It's, it's physical, it's kinetic, and it's whimsical. But when we get into the room of requirement, we'll touch on that a little bit more. And I like how all these things interconnect, like the magic, like everything you see, all of it has like a purpose or something, more than just like an aesthetic look to it. It actually has a mechanic to it. Uh, everything that we can use. If you remember in the state of play, you know how we see the little shops and we can walk past the wizards and witches, wizards and witches on the countryside. And this looks like that's one of the things and it has a purple fire in there. So I'm thinking this may be one of the icons on the screen might be meaning, oh, there's a vendor here, go, go to them. And um, a mad credit to Ben Snow, uh, although he was really excited and he was absolutely adorable uh, with his responses, but he did ask some very good questions. One of the questions he asked was about the broom. He said, hey, is this the only broom we get or is there more? And it was funny because Alan was kind of touching on that a little bit right before Ben asked that question that, you know, the technology of the brooms at this time is still, they're still learning a lot about brooms and their mechanics and how fast they can move. So when Ben acts, you can get upgrades. So you can upgrade your broom so you can customize it to be as close to a Nimbus 2000 or 1000 as possible or Firebolt. But again, you know, this is, you know, Victorian era of broom technology. Now we come to another Revelio page in front of us. And if you notice right here, there's something that we can use right there. When I first saw it, I was like, what is that little icon? What is that? So it looks like it's like a bench or something, or maybe it's like a pot, something we could pick up and use, or maybe it's a plant we can harvest. I'm not entirely sure. But I saw that and I saw the Revelio page and I was like, what? Oh my God, so many Revelio pages. This is so cool. Okay, and we're continue flying. It looks like some of these things might be like residents you can actually go to. And Andrew, if you're watching, thank you for flying slow in certain areas so we can kind of get a good eye, like get a good eye on what's around us. And then you can see here to the far left side of the map, 
it looks like there's another cave and there's another icon coming up here we're right next to the revelio area so that means while we're walking we might see something shimmering and we have to say revelio and you know and we get our goodies or we discover something about the forest or maybe a resident or something this you see the little leaf looking thing or feather thing this is a merlin puzzle that's what i'm calling them and then you see these little statues right here i don't know if it has a mechanical purpose or maybe it's something to do with the area we're in i'm not entirely sure but you notice you see more than one of them in this particular area so i don't know are these hedge witches i don't know what these dolls or these statues actually stand for i don't know if it's if it's narrative or not but i'm pretty sure we'll find out what they actually mean if we do a revelli or something but i'm not entirely sure so i like that and you see this little red dot here that means that's an enemy uh you'll be passing right there that is the merlin uh thingy right there the merlin puzzle so that means we get there and we throw leaves on it and it opens up so i think that's really cool and of course you know that ties into the merlin morgana all that goodness so let's continue and then you see right there see that that little doll you saw that little statue i'm not calling it's not an actual doll it's a statue but you see that there but you also see it here as well and you see one right here and one right here so it's like three of them so i don't know are these dolls represented like do they represent something i couldn't find anything that was related to it maybe i might find it later in the um in the conception art we might figure out what these things actually represent but as of right now i don't know and there are two enemies off to the far right uh on the map here so let's continue and then oh my god okay in this area here and again i love the hang time like i love this it's like so cool like the way he shifts and moves like it really looks it's very well animated very well animated and as you can see there are birds right here and when you get ready to fly off you'll hear them flutter away and there's another flu flame right here and i'm wondering who lives here uh, again this makes me wonder if sebastian sallow's uncle lives on the grounds outside so it, it, again so i just wonder purely cosmetic oh. but uh if you You're the birds. talk to the shopkeep uh and help him out okay and then you'll notice this kept popping up dueling facts so it says uh complete the battle in in like 10 minutes like in 10 seconds so it's like this could be like other animals like animals because they're, they're like wolves and stuff and trolls um or goblins sorry in the area that you can fight so basically you can defeat them in 10 seconds so maybe if you do like a nevada cadaver or something when we get to combat or something so maybe these are like challenges remember the 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 field guide sorry i couldn't think of the word the field guide that we get from the ministry of magic remember alan said the book is designed to help you learn all around you so i i like that so i think that's really we'll cool that you kind of see that kind of stuff there's another merlin puzzle there's another merlin puzzle we see more it looks like street lanterns there's people walking but then there are signs in this part right here and one of them looks like it says hogwarts one of them says hogsmeade i can't really see the rest because it's like it's blurry and then on top of that <laughs> eyesight so i like this because it tells you where to go like where you can go to find stuff and that's like really cool because it's like ancient street signs you know i i just love it so much uh and i like that they have that so again if you ever get lost just look at the street signs and right here when um Andrew goes up and he flies and that basically drains like the stamina or the um I forgot the the word they use for it hold on maybe we'll go back and catch it real quick and we can hear what they actually call the low it meter down there you can only go at max speed without the meter going down kind of closer to the ground and as you raise into the air you notice the meter drop and so those upgrades will allow you to increase that distance from the ground and there the the broom owner at at the Sporting goods store in in Hogsmeade is so basically you can upgrade it when you are with that broom store or whoever this person is we don't know but they're in Hogsmeade and you see he actually turns towards whatever this is so I was thinking was this the grave um the graveyard right here so I'm assuming it is though but I, again I'm not entirely sure so you'll notice right here this is the same grave site the same grave where you see your character with um sir patrick 
no I mean sir nearly headless nick um and he's like oh sir remember why i'm here so i think this is the graveyard that you go to during that mission but i'm not entirely sure because i don't think there was a graveyard on hogwarts in the grounds of hogwarts i don't think so um i think it was more like on the grounds outside of it but i think this is where you go for um for that um and then you'll notice here uh uh you'll see more um more enemy things here uh keep enemies um air uh, you know keep enemies airborne so it's like for 10 seconds so while you're fighting you can just do like leviosa and keep hitting them for about 10 seconds before they actually land and accio sorry um i really like this and use mandrakes against enemies um so it means it's very important like i said it's important when you we, especially when we get into combat uh that we learn all these little fun things so going to class is going to be key to how good you are as a fighter um in this game so again like i said it looks like yeah the icon here is a representation of this location which is the uh which is the cemetery okay right when we get to about here you start noticing new icons so there's another revelio page there's another revelio page there um it looks like there's another treasure chest and it looks like right here that's another chest as well so it looks like there's like hidden chests probably one of those seeing eye chests the disillusion uh the disillusionment chest that's what it looks like is going to be in this area or it could be just a regular chest that you can open so i think that's really cool that we have that of course, you keep going. Uh, looks like there's more chests in this area. So there's somewhere around the grounds as you're walking, probably in the this this tower here, this little, I don't know what you would call it. Um, I don't know what, I don't know. I don't know what you would actually call it. It's so funny because um, Ben actually says, uh, I think, I forgot what he actually calls it. Hold on. Because he wanted to take the controller out of uh, Adrian's hand. I do too, Ben. I do too. Hamlet, that was the word. So the Hamlet was the little house I think we passed a cottage. Uh, or maybe this is the Hamlet. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, I love it. And you can tell there's a lot of little treasures around. And remember, when we do Revelio, it shows us um, where these areas, where these things are hidden. Because these things could be inside of buildings or inside caves as well. So again, there's just so much good stuff. Like, so well, good. I, guess, I don't know if that's how it's called. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Yeah. Right? And then, for those of you who remember, this is from the summertime ASMR. So, um, when you see this little hamlet here or restaurant, I think it's like probably like a little restaurant um, right here, you'll notice the bridge, and it looks like the water from the ASMR till now. Again, you know me; I'm always talking about how things constantly get look get upgrades. And then once again, you see a flu flame and another Merlin puzzle. And so far, I think that's about. Um, I think that's about three, three Merlin puzzles we passed. Oh, and also Black Wolf, you asked me in the comment section, you were like, oh, did you notice all the Merlin puzzles? Yes, my friend, I noticed, and I'm trying to keep count. I think he said he counted about six. So, like I said, I see three right about now. So yeah, I, again, I love this, and I just love the animation and the mechanics of this. So, so good. And I love the little house that's growing out of, uh, that's growing out of the trees. Oh my god, we're gonna we're gonna spend so much of our, we're gonna spend years playing this fucking game. And I love how he dismounts. That's so cool. And I love you see all the students, you see the the gentleman playing uh the instrument. I, I don't know what you call this, a tuba, a tuba, a trumpet, or maybe it's a magical instrument. Clearly it's magical, it's floating. Right here, you can actually tip the guy. So cool. And if you notice. There are people over here, like, I guess they're playing a game. Maybe they're playing Gobstones. Maybe we'll find uh, Zenobia. I always say her name so wrong. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Zenobia, maybe we'll find her over here playing with some new friends. And hopefully she doesn't call them poor losers, you know? Oh my God, so good. And you see this one is a um, Ravenclaw, some Hufflepuffs. Oh, and this right here. Just look at that. Look at that tree. Look at this background, like so good and then again you see more little stuff you see another revelio page is over here um and then here the street signs like oh my god the street signs so cool and as you can see um that's asrunshire hopefully i'm saying that right asrunshire 
Oh, a Runshire. That's what it. A Runshire. Sorry. You see where it's telling you to go to um, Hogsmeade. There's some other streets in here. There's uh, uh, looks like Brock. Uh, Brock something. I can't really tell. Again, it's 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 just my. I have really bad eyes. I'm not even joking. Um, there's like a lot of little things up here. Uh, uh, I can't see some of the other signs are just the the writing and the shading makes it like hard to see but I really like it I think it's so cool that we see that and again if ever you get lost find the street signs and I love the little charm to all the houses and you see their laundry on the thing it just makes me think about the burrow when uh with the Weasleys like you know and you think about you know um Molly Weasley while she's doing stuff at her house and everything's just so magical and whimsical and I just love it it's so good Okay, let's continue. And of course, there are two Revelio pages of the Merlin puzzle that we're walking past. There's another Revelio page. This looks like it's another maybe chess. It looks like there's two of them. A lot of the stuff that we were passing, we're now closer to. Okay, so let us continue. Right here. Again, remember when they showed us in the state of play where the little guy was walking and you would see the little vendors? Clearly, she's another one. And you see all the little potions she's brewing right here. But the question is, is what is she selling? I, I just, I really want to know, what is she selling? I, I wish Andrew would have walked up to her and asked her a question, but he didn't. So I was like, ah, oh well. But look, she's not even, I don't know if this, this icon here means that this is her shop. I, I just don't know. Or there's like a trunk somewhere nearby. I'm not entirely sure. Because as you can see, the moment he turns away from her, she was really close to him. So sometimes the vendors are not located on the map. So, or maybe they become, they pop up on the map. And then this right here, this little guy right here is practicing on flying on a broom. And I think that is the cutest thing ever. And of course you see the Merlin puzzle, you see the flu flame. And again, you notice this chair here has a halo. So I'm wondering, uh, like I said before, is this, is this based on, you know, that we can sit there or we can use it. And I like the fact that you can see right here, another Revelio page that we walk by and he grabs this and I'm pretty sure this might be a butter beer. And there's another halo there and there's another drink on this table that you can interact with. So I love it. Uh, when they say, oh, we've already seen us fly on a, on a broom, but now we're gonna fly on our, our, our flight mount, you know? And of course you hear the little charm uh, as, the, as the Onyx Griffin, Gryffindor, as the Onyx, uh, Hippogriff sort of comes out. Oh my god, there he just like pops out of the the <laughs> back. Oh wait, you can use it as a horsey? Ben, if ever you see this, that right there made you a national treasure. The fact that you said it was a horsey. Oh my god, that was adorable and I love it so much. It just, it's, cause it's so random and you wouldn't expect him to say it, but it's just hilarious. But now, let's talk about the things we see. So the moment you bring out uh, the flying uh, hippogriff, you notice the paw print appears, and if you press right on the D-pad, that actually does something, but what that does, I don't know. Uh, and you notice, it doesn't look like the Hippogriff has a bar of any kind, um, and you notice the sheep, all the little goats over here in this tree, so cool. And you're leaving all the goodies behind. Um, but as, um, one thing I noticed with the grab horn. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I love how they explain that, yes, with the Hippogriff, you can run with it, you can walk with it, you can fly with it and all that stuff. And you'll notice um, enemies, and you notice when the screen makes that flash, that means you're in, like you're ready for combat. And you'll notice these little question marks right here. They go from, they fill up, and then they turn to exclamation points like in, um, like in Metal Gear Solid, that little <laughs> sound. So meaning like you're ready for fighting, uh, which is really cool. And what I was gonna say about this um, uh, hippogriff, um, with the grab horn, you can ram enemies. So you can attack enemies using the grab horn. So the question is, can you can you fight with the griffin, you know, with the hippogriff? Can you fight with them? Or can you have other magical beasts fight for you or help you? So I'm really curious about that. And maybe, maybe we will need Poppy to help us figure that out. Oh, and then right here, you see another uh, paw print right here. So that means somewhere in this area, there's another magical beast 
in this area and there are enemies around so maybe we need to protect that animal from you know from something and as you can see the question mark is still filling up but as we fly further away it just drops back down uh so i like that so it's always warning you that you're becoming more and more visible to your enemies um there are little enemies that appear on the screen and they look like they're goblins um yeah because you see like the little this is like to warn you like you've been spotted or something or you've been noticed uh, and you see the enemy quest marks, uh, question marks feeling up. Okay, these little things you see here look like goblins. Now the question is, are these the are these the corrupted goblins or are these just regular goblins? That's what we do not know. So cool. Okay, after you say bye bye to all the enemies, then all of a sudden, bam, scenery change because now you're in a bog or a swamp. Um, but one thing what I do want you to notice is that there's another Merlin puzzle right here because you see where uh, the Onyx Hippogriff is facing and you see this area right here. So that's another Merlin puzzle, but there's more in this area that I saw. So again, this looks like this is an icon for a cave, like a cave entrance. So maybe kind of like, I don't know if you guys ever play Tomb Raider. Uh, but in the more modern Tomb Raider games, while you're on adventures, you can find random tombs and you get experience points for finding these random tombs and maybe uh, investigating some artifacts or something. So um, they're called tomb, they're called challenge tombs or something. So because it's been a while since I played Tomb Raider, maybe I should do a let's play of it on my channel. Um, you see that and then it tells you right here the tool wheel l1 so if you do that you can find useful uh find things useful for dueling with high potions and we'll talk more about the potions and everything when we get to combat but basically like i told you when i did the combat system when you press l1 you drink a potion and it helps you either it helps you increase your um your cooldown time or you can use um use the one of the magical plants um and maybe in this area here you can find ingredients so you know I, i'm just i just like oh my god i'm so excited or maybe this is like for a special type of plant but uh, then again i don't know and again it shows you it's as slow a um slow down an assassin so i i like this so much i think this is I, I think that's so cool when it tells you what you need to do to slow down like a loyalty assassin but loyal to whom you know that that's the real question and then that's a dueling facts and then there's more it tells you um i guess that's a dug dog uh by its tongue so i i like that so you hear about these animals but you don't really see them very much uh, until fantastic beasts and where to find them but you read about them more in the book so that means this beast is in the area and then also right here, this looks like a puzzle or a maze in this area. So maybe if you go inside the cave, you can find this. And I'm sorry if I read that word wrong. Um, and you notice how Andrew is very purposefully turning the camera, one, to show us what's around, but to also adjust where he's going. So again, Andrew, good move, smart move, man. Because you notice he flies around this area, which is in this general vicinity so i don't know if this is this tree right here there's something about this tree because if you look at it it looks unusually beautiful in this area so maybe it's a magical tree i don't know but i noticed that and i said oh okay cool so and then if you keep flying you'll see these fireflies here um and i wonder are these like remember in the autumn asmr you heard the the buzzing bee sound so i'm wondering are those the things we were hearing because there's like a magical insect like it's like a like a something bee uh in this uh in this in the wizarding world so i'm wondering are these them because they're like glowing firefly bees you know i don't know the proper name for them but you know just you know or maybe they're flibbity gibbets not sure um and then again you see another cave you see another one of those icons so that means there's some kind of location over here like maybe it's not necessarily because last time it was a cemetery when you saw the inverted pyramid so maybe if it's not necessarily a camp maybe it's some kind of other large location that's an important uh key area and then of course you see the magical beast so i think that's the 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 dud dog uh, hopefully i'm saying that word correctly uh bog uh in this area so maybe it's down there somewhere and you have to tame it or save it from other poachers not sure or maybe you have to fight it 
you see more enemies and then we come to this min wheel um and so far i think we're up to about four merlin puzzles and then again you see another revelio page you see there's another treasure and you see there's another merlin puzzle which is basically right here um and it looks like there is a treasure, a cave, a Revelio map, and still our main objective, yellow quest marker. And this is just beautiful. And when I first saw this, I thought this was the edge of the map, but when I watched it again, I learned that wasn't the edge of the map because it still keeps going. Because when he turns around, when uh, Andrew eventually turns around, look at that, there is so much more land in that direction and that is just like oh my god like look at that and remember what uh, what uh what alan said anything you see you can go to um and look at all that clear water i just want to get on buck uh, buck beak <laughs> i just want to fly our onyx hippogriff over the water and just see how far i can go or i'm wondering does the map roll back around to the other side of the map so basically it's essentially a world it just there's no actual barrier it just rotates back into the area where you need to be so that would be very clever game design but you know we'll see uh, and you see this right here like oh my god so gorgeous and then if you notice you see the balloons here so this has something to do with um being on the broom you know and even though we don't have quidditch seeing this makes me say fudge I wish there was Quidditch in the game. Hopefully it's a DLC, you know? But we'll see, we'll see. Oh my God, so gorgeous. I love the animation uh, when the when the Hippogriff is just, you know, just hovering. So good. The animation is just amazing. And I love the Onyx Hippogriff because inside you can see like a gold um, sequence with inside. And that was the same way my wife's prom dress was. It was a black dress with gold sequence. It was so beautiful. Okay. So now you see it in winter time and it looks spectacular. So beautiful. And it was, and you see like Ben freaking out. And again, there's the Merlin puzzle. Uh, and I think that's like number four, number four or five, five. I think that's about five, five or six. Um, and you see there's more, you see there's more. There's another Revelio as he goes further down. You see the, the water wheel or yeah, water wheel right there. And you can see there's more to it and there are other little things down here. It looks like there's like a road down here um, that leads, but I don't see any houses, but definitely there are more people that live in the area. So this, that is so cool. And that just looks so amazing. And look at this ruin right here. You notice that there is a bridge right about here. You notice that there's a bridge right here, you know, and you see all the ruin stuff and you see little fires that are lit. So maybe this is also a puzzle as well when you get to the ruin uh, and you maybe you do a puzzle in this area. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm very impressed. I, I just like, oh, like we're going to spend years like so much of my life is going to be devoted to this game. You don't even know. Oh, one thing I do want to point out right here is that you notice that there is an ancient magic flame symbol here. You notice this like the archway and everything. But if you look on the map right here, there is an ancient magic something in this area because that's the ancient magic flame symbol. Because remember, when Ben was asking during combat, we all, you know, the community, we call that the ancient magic symbol. And then Alan, thank you for saying we're very astute uh, that we figured it out. But again, you ancient magic logo everywhere and, and they called it the ancient magic flame which or the eternal flame because we'll talk about that later when we get into the combat portion of the game um and then again there's an ancient magic symbol so again this is a puzzle area or a revealing area uh maybe you might get like a spell upgrade i'm not entirely sure um and this again the balloons are definitely for when you're playing um not playing when you're flying on your broom oh and then other things i want to point out real quick let's go back i'm so sorry you'll notice that there are wizards and witches in this area and they're just using magic. So, it, and it shows there are enemies in the area. And then you can also see this person may have a quest. So I think, you know, you see there's a flu flame um, to our left. And then we see there's a witch over there. And then there's that person right there. So these are people that need help as well. And then also in this area, you hear noises. So I don't know if this is like a special 
plant or animal in this area? I'm not entirely within sure. Within school as well. So there are moments like when it reaches certain holidays. You see there's a magical beast and there's an icon again for a location. So maybe it's, it's nestled in between the rocks or maybe it's inside the rocks or something. Maybe it's like a special cave. But yeah, it's let's listen. Like that, where Hogsmeade. You hear that crunching sound and you notice the little flibbity glowing gibbets. I don't know if that's flibbity gibbets or not, but you notice the animals there and you hear the noise. Oh, so. Oh my God. Holidays. so you heard that. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited. And then again, you see another little cave on the marker there. We're gonna mute this once again. And we're gonna continue on our magical journey. Oh my God, this is just, again, for people who have read that, oh, and look, another do, a defeat an enemy with the Chinese chomping cabbage, or as I like to say, baby cabbages, because uh, they're my babies. And the fact that I can pull like a, um, a poison ivy, meaning I can use venomous tentaculars, the Chinese chomping cabbage, um, I can use probably devil's snare, you know, to bind enemies or something. So the fact that I can use plants with magic and potions like that is like my ideal way to play a Harry Potter a uh, Harry Potter character to use everything at my disposal but I know this is not about combat this is about the world but again I'm just really excited and like I said to anyone who's read the books and watched the movies and is like a massive fan even if you're not like a super fan the fact that you see this and like you can actually be in this world it's just it, it just takes you, to, it's just so amazing. It's just, I'm so happy that we have, this is such a glorious gift. And even though this game has been delayed for PS4 owners and Xbox, uh, Xbox One and all that. But again, it's worth the wait. Cause look at this, look, just look at what we're about to receive. This is just amazing. So beautiful. And I love how he flies really low in these areas right here. And it's just, it looks so good. Okay. So right here enemy so that's a troll right there so again whenever you see the flashy thing that means engagement and the enemy starts to notice you meaning warning you're in a dangerous area you might need to play style because remember we can crouch and hide and we can do things like uh, hide ourselves away so again i like that we can there's so many play styles you can go in wands of blazing or you can be sneaky sneaky style and i totally support those who who do all and yeah, I love how it, you see the auto save and you notice the enemy has noticed you. There's another dueling combat, uh, perform a dueling combo, um, 10 hit combo right there on an enemy. Uh, and this, just look at that. It's like, I can literally feel, I can literally feel the cold air. Like it's just so good. And then down here, you'll notice a little, uh, pyramid thing of pyre right here so again i don't know is this a, a quest point or a saving point in this area that's why i wanted to point that out uh when you're in this area so again when you see these little uh objects is that again that's what i said is that an area where you can save the game is that like an area where you can stay for a while so there's a lot of i have a lot of questions about the things that we're seeing because it could represent a lot of different things but again we won't know until either it's revealed or we play the game and then you notice certain things down here have halos. So these are things you can interact with or use, or maybe you can transfigure. I'm not entirely sure. And you notice like you see all the little villagers running around. There's another chest in this area. Somewhere over here, there's a chest for you to find. Maybe it's in that house. Cause think about it, it makes sense that these chests would be in these two different homes. So maybe if you go in the house, like maybe if you help the people, they might say, oh, here, you have access to my chest. Or we'll just be straight up vandalizing people by breaking and entering and saying, give me your sh And then also there's something else I forgot to mention when we were in the town circle area, and we'll go back to that, um, is that there was a Alohomora lock on one of the doors. Oh my goodness, so good. And uh, the fact that you can fly higher and look at all the stuff we're passing. Revelio, Revelio, another Merlin puzzle. So what is that, about seven now? About six to seven Merlin puzzles we done passed in this, just in this little area, just in this little area. You know, of course we're moving faster because we're on a broom and we're flying, but oh my God. And just imagine if you were just walking or running through this area, you would be able to see everything up close and then you could just touch everything. Ugh, I have problems, but just look at this, look at this. Oh, 
my god so beautiful and then the funny thing is you can even probably go higher you can even go higher i'm sure of it because hogwarts is pretty high remember you saw when, on the um on the uh god what was the name of it dark legacy dlc trail the dark legacy trailer where you can see we can ride a festral you see the character flying high in the sky and they're above hogwarts so again the the they can get pretty high in the sky that means we could fly over mountains so <sighs> i can't wait i can't wait oh my god anywho you see more rebellion more puzzles and then again you see these balloons here this is a part of that racing course. I'm sure, I'm sure that this is a part of the racing course when you're on the broom. And remember, they talked all about brooms at the beginning. So imagine if you were on your broom and flying high or flying once you do the upgrades, you can like be zooming around. Oh my God, I can't wait. Again, now that I see it, even though I don't care for Quidditch like that, not that Quidditch is boring, I think it's cool, but I'm not really a sports person. I think if they do a Quidditch DLC or they do a sequel and they add quidditch so good so good and remember this is this is after we got to see the inside of hogwarts and now we're seeing outside of hogwarts and it's just like will i eat will i sleep <laughs> so good i'm gonna eat and sleep but you know it's just it's just amazing so beautiful look at that just look at the landscape and just again and you think about Boston and you think about Allen and McKenzie and also Chandler and everyone else who worked on this game. They spent five years, five years of their lives bringing this. And it is so worth the wait. It is so worth the wait. If they even said, hey guys, we're going to push Hogwarts Legacy back one more year, even though I would be upset. I, after seeing this and the first showcase, I would be like, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because nobody wants another cyberpunk. Nobody wants another cyberpunk. Just saying. Oh, so good. And then again, Hogwarts in the background. <sighs> I'm just... I'm just like Alan, because Alan's like, it's amazing when you think about you go all outside, but yet the teachers and your classmates and everyone is there. Ah, so good. Oh my god. Okay, and now we're about to zoom down and we're about to start to see some more goodies. So as Buckbeak, oh, look at that. Look, look at that. Look at that. That is just, that's exquisite artistry. That's exquisite artistry. Again, Trey Magnifique. And of course, there's more enemies in the area. That's why you saw the flashy flash. And then right here, you see this dude right here using... It looks like Lumos or some kind of, again, ambient magic. Perhaps he's, uh, I don't think he's a quest because you don't see any markers around him. But I, I just noticed that when we were flying in the area on top of the enemies. Maybe he'll be someone while we're fighting. Maybe he'll help us. I'm not entirely sure. And then, of course, you see wolves in this area. Uh, the wolves and there's a man off to the side. But look, 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 look. Another cave, another Revelio. We're going to keep going. We see the Revelio, all that stuff. And you see all the animals, the wolves. So that means we can fight them. And then there's something down here. I don't know what this is, but it's a glowy something. And so if we're on the ground and maybe after we fight the wolves again. Oh, okay. So again, here's another uh, interrupt, a charm. You know, so basically you can do um, charging, sorry. Um, uh, the charging beast. So you can interrupt them with a spell. But the thing is, though, is what is this right here? I don't know what this is at the bottom of the screen. So, yes, very curious. Very curious. And then again, more amazingness. And right about here. Two things. One, another Merlin puzzle. Two, there's the bridge to Hogwarts, because that's Hogwarts right there. That's Hagrid's hut in the distance. And you'll start to notice there's some more things here. Ba 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 ba. Uh, someone, a student, is standing there. So a quest marker. There's a treasure chest that looks like that's some kind of other icon. I don't really know. I can't really tell what that is. Uh, but we passed it on the way. Remember when we flew down on the broom when we flew down from Hagrid's hut, but we were on the other side of the tree. We flew down this way, and those are those icons we were seeing on the way up. But um, I think I think that's a flu flame. That's a flu flame for sure. Okay. 
Now, right in this area here, I did say we were going to go back to this because there's something, like I said, I wanted you guys to see outside of this beautiful fucking walking animation. Like, I want to go walking around with this guy. The one, let me tell you why I like this jacket. One, it reminds me so much of Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil 4 when he was wearing that awesome, like, jacket. I actually have one like it. They call it a pilot jacket right there. Yes, perfect. See the cute little kid on his broom. Uh, it, looks, it looks like this is a couple. Like, it's so cute, even though there's, there's MP PCs probably don't even know each other, but uh, it's just so cute. And you see the little, this looks like some like male or something right here. I just don't know what this is. And look, Aloha Mora. So perhaps at night we go out, maybe, or maybe this is one of the Dedalian keys, you know, from the school. We find them and be like, where do you belong to? But even though that's hitting cabinets within the school, but it just makes me think like, is that like a Dedalian key for something else? Or maybe, uh, um, the headmistress did it on this cabbage as well because maybe this is not just necessarily a cabbage because i think this is the this is that big old restaurant hamlet thing we see but i'm not entirely sure but it could be that for sure hold on let's let's test my theory this is when he goes to her and he starts walking around all that stuff and yeah i think it is it's connected yeah because that's the front of the building and that's the side of the building so yeah this is that whole hamlet so aloha mora but if you notice inside the hamlet there's a chest so uh, like just this area alone there are so many things to look at theorize and all that so what i'm wondering because alan does mention there's a day and night cycle and the day and night cycle depending on what's going on you can access things you couldn't access before so i'm wondering at night does this place open up more you know, because then it's like a, you know, the door will be open. There are patrons inside. Uh, you know, people be eating and drinking. Maybe we can meet people inside. Because remember, you saw us um, talking with a goblin. So maybe are we talking to people in here, making other friends, like outside of school on non-schoolmate NPC friends? You know, and then it got me thinking, what if this is a business that um, Sebastian Uncle owns? Because remember, if Sebastian's uncle is not... The groundskeeper and he doesn't he's not the um teacher for magical beasts perhaps perhaps he owns the business in town and this is one of the businesses that he owns because if you look at his clothing he looks like a like he has like a day laborer because he wears the stripes that's again back into victorian victorian era times um, you would find that kind of clothing. So I'm wondering, is he a barkeeper or does he own the, uh, or maybe he owns the, um, the cemetery? I, I just don't know. Uh, and there's so many things to speculate on with all of this. So what I want to know guys is, um, I, and again, based on everything, I think, like I said, we saw about seven seven or eight Merlin puzzles in the area. But what I want to know is, did I miss something as I was going through this? And if there are things that I missed, tell me so I can go back and check. Uh, and let me know in the comment section down below. But also, what do you guys think about this? Are you really excited uh, to see this portion of the game? Was this your favorite part of the showcase? Uh, seeing that we could be on hippogriffs and we could be on brooms and all the little quest markers everywhere. You know, the fact that you saw it go from autumn to winter you know or is there another favorite part because again my favorite part of the entire showcase was the room of requirement there is just so many things i loved about the room of requirement and this is how i know my life as a person is over and that somehow i'm gonna be doing nothing but hogwarts legacy <laughs> it's gonna be a hogwarts channel kids i'm so sorry i'm just kidding now but um so yeah i want to know what do you guys think are you excited about it what do you think some of the things mean like the halo color uh covered object because even when we were flying on the hippogriff hold on yeah like right here i don't know if you could see this but right here this has a halo on it um so this is something you can interact with when you're in this area so again I love it so much. Um, and you see this little island in the background. So I wonder, cause I think this is the area where they bury Dumbledore in the books and in the movies. But I wonder, can, is there a Merlin puzzle? Even though it doesn't show it, but is there a Merlin puzzle here on top of the flu flames? But anywho, so if you guys enjoyed any of this content, have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, more balloons for the racetrack, 
uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you guys for giving me your time and attention. Stay tuned for part two as I go into the combat dark arts arena and we talk more about that as well. Um, be sure to like this, subscribe, leave a comment down below, hit the notification bells. And yeah, and I can't wait to hear from you. And again, hello to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the Micah Let's Play family. And yeah, I, I, I don't know how else to end this, but you know, my mischief has been managed for now. So, bye! <laughs>